Grammar, the big picture. Phrases and clauses. When I decided to get my master's degree in TESOL, I was worried about passing my pronunciation and grammar classes. To my surprise, I did fine in both classes. The reason is that I looked at both of them as formulaic. For pronunciation, put your tongue here, hold your mouth like this, and vibrate your breath as you pronounce whatever sound. For me, grammar fit even better into mathematic type formulas. So, what I am going to present in the next couple of videos is a big picture look at grammar that I've adapted from numerous sources. For some of you, my method will just confuse you. So go ahead and stop now. But for others, this will bring needed insights into the language. Do I actually teach ESL students this way? Yes, I do. In fact, it's the very first few classes of a new semester. I generally teach advanced ESL students, so they have all learned about phrases, clauses, and other parts of sentences, but most of them have never had it taught all at once. So when I do it, it's the first time they have been shown it, shown how it all fits together. Let's start by looking at the difference between phrases and clauses. The big difference is that phrases do not have a subject and a verb. Now, they sometimes look like they do, and sometimes the phrase itself is the complete subject. But if you can't find a subject and verb, then you are looking at a phrase. Of course, another problem are the understood subjects, such as in commands like open the door. The subject is understood to be you, which means the person that I'm talking to, and therefore it is a clause. Okay, phrases do not have subjects and verbs, but clauses do. If there is at least one subject and at least one verb, then it is a clause. That leads to the next confusing aspect. There are two types of clauses. Independent clauses, which I refer to as IC, and dependent clauses, which I refer to as DC. ESL students get confused here because they are taught things like conditional clauses and adjective clauses. What they don't realize is that adjective clauses, conditional clauses, adverb clauses, etc. are all subcategories under the big umbrella of dependent clause. So, if the clause expresses a complete thought, then it is an in independent clause. If it contains an incomplete thought, then it is a dependent clause. For example, it is so hot today. That's a complete thought. You don't need more information to understand the sentence. So that he applied for school is an incomplete thought. However, even though it is an incomplete thought, it still has a subject, which is he, and verb, which is applied. So it is a clause and not a phrase. And yes, it is the addition of that subordinate conjunction, so that, which causes it to be incomplete. How about while applying for school? Is that an independent clause, dependent clause, or a phrase? The word while confuses many students into thinking this is a dependent clause, but there is no subject. So without a subject, this has to be a phrase. Now, how do I write this stuff in a formula? Well, if there is an incomplete thought and it does not have a subject and or no verb, then it equals a phrase. Okay. The next formula, if the clause is just one clause, one C, and it contains a complete thought, then it equals an independent clause, I C. Next formula, if there's just one clause which is not a complete thought, does have a subject and verb because it is a clause, then it equals a dependent clause. 
DC. The next two videos in this series will look at the four sentence structures.